What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be continuing the Proxmox series. So we've been working on the Zima board to build out a Proxmox server. We're trying to see how much we can actually host all of it with the resources available on the Zima board. So today we're going to be working on making a media server. So we're going to be using Jellyfin. If you remember a while back I did do a Jellyfin series and I'm going to redo it with the Zima board because I want to remake the series and I want to add a couple different things that I've learned since then and update it because it has been a little bit since we've done it. So today we're going to work on setting up a Jellyfin machine and getting it running and we're going to start from there. So let's get right into it and build our Jellyfin machine. So if you're not familiar, Jellyfin is a free software media system. So it's pretty much similar to Plex or the same idea, but it is completely free. There's no there's no pass, there's no add-ons, there's nothing additional that you need to pay for. It's all free and an open software system. So it is usable across the web, desktop, Android, Apple, Amazon, Roku, Kodi, and many more. And as you can see it has a pretty nice interface. Um, like I said, I've made a video on this in the past and I have set it up before, but we're gonna redo it and we're gonna work on it today. So we're gonna come over to documentation. Uh, we're gonna do installation. And there are different ways you can do it. But we're going to just do it on Linux today. And we're going to pick the easiest version of Linux that I like to work with. And we're probably going to do Ubuntu just because I already have the ISO for it. So we're going to scroll down and find Ubuntu. And then we'll start from there. But before we can make our machine, we do need to figure out the requirements for it. So here's the page for the hardware requirements. And we're just going to scroll down pretty much look at what we need. So Jellyfin does allow hardware transcoding, which is really nice because by default Plex doesn't. You need a Plex Pass to do that. But luckily Jellyfin has pretty simple requirements. So for what we're going to be doing with it off our server, I think we will be good. Uh, so if I scroll up, the scroll up here is our requirements. So we have a i5-2300 or a Ryzen 3 1200 or better a CPU Pentium G4560 or an i3-7100 so that's without the GPU uh, we have either 8 gigs of RAM or more uh, we have 60 gigs of storage and we have some graphics so we're actually going to not have 8 gigs of RAM because that would use up all of our, mother, our server which is okay we're gonna make it work because we're not gonna be running a full-fledged server we're shooting this to you know share amongst the house really um, the CPU, we're going to give it what we can, probably about two cores. It's going to be running Ubuntu, so it'll be okay. This is going to be a real test for it. I think we'll be fine, because I've done this in the past with really limited resources. And then we'll probably give it um, a different amount of storage, just so we can save some local media on it. We're going to be doing it a little bit differently than I have in the past. And then we'll go from there. So let's get started with building the machine. Before we can build the machine, we need to add the ISO, and to do that, we need to come in here and we need to add the ISO image to it. So I'm going to put it on the, let's see, put it on the local LVM because we have some room. I'm going to put it on the local disk because we have plenty of room on it and it accepts ISO images. So I'm going to come over here to local, I'm going to click ISO images, I'm going to click download from URL. So I actually just went over to the Ubuntu server site and I just clicked the link. And I copied it for the download link. So now I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to click download from URL. We're going to query URL and we're going to download. We're just going to make this easier instead of transferring it from my PC. So instead of downloading it to my PC and then uploading it back up. Of course, you can just upload it straight from your PC and make it easier if that's what you want. You know, if you have a certain image you already have that you want to use, no big deal. You can do it that way. I don't care either way. It's going to be grabbing me, you know, the latest 2204 version. So it works for me. Now we're just going to let this download and then we'll start working. Oh, so it's already done, so let's start working. So now we can come back and we can make a VM. So I'm going to create a VM. We're going to call it Jellyfin. Click Next. And now we're going to pick our ISO image. So this is where the ISO image is stored. So we're going to select Local because that's where I just put my Ubuntu image. We're going to click Next. Now we're start getting into our system configuration. All this by default is pretty good, so we can just leave it. And now this is where we're going to have to start changing some stuff. So it's going to depend on how you want to set up your machine and how your hardware is configured. So we have different options. If you want to store your media locally, then I would suggest really bumping up your disk size. But for the server, how we have it currently set up, we're not going to really be able to do that. 
because I only have about 500 gigs available for storage between my VMs. So I'm going to give it some decent space, but I'm not going to have a lot of room to put my media on it. So the next best option would be to mount a network chair. So if you use something like the Pinez that I made in the previous videos, you could put a larger hard drive on there and make that your media share. And then you could leave your Proxmox server to have more resource availability to do it that way. So of course, then you can link the Jellyfin machine to the Pinez, and then you could pull the media that way. We might do something like that in this video, so I'm only gonna give this maybe about 100 gigs. I'll probably put some media on it locally just to make it easier, but this is how we're gonna work. So I'm gonna just give it 100 gigs, and then we'll click next. We'll give it two cores. I don't really need two cores. It's just running Linux, so it should be fine, but we'll click next. And I'm gonna leave it at two gigs. I know it says eight gig requirement, but I've run this in the past with really limited resources and we're really just testing to see how much we can fit on this machine. So let's see what we can do. So we'll click network. So now we'll click next. We don't need to change it on the network and then we'll confirm it and we'll run. Now, of course, with all this hardware configuration I set, we could either change it in the future or if we do need to rebuild the machine, we can rebuild the machine. Like I said, we're just looking for a small local Jellyfin server. If you're gonna be using this to serve you know, your friends and outside of your house, you definitely wanna size it up to meet the minimum requirements. Um, you probably want at least eight gigs of RAM, probably two, you probably want like four cores, maybe even more if you have it, and definitely more hard drive space. You don't wanna run out of hard drive space and then kill your machine. But look at the machine's all set up, so now we've started it up and started the setup. So we're gonna go through this. It's just setting up a, no, a normal Ubuntu machine, so I'm gonna skip through this and come back when we start doing the install. So now there's different ways I could have done this. I could have not ran a dedicated machine to run Jellyfin off of, and I probably could have run an Ubuntu machine and just ran the Docker for Jellyfin off of it. You know, I could have set up like a Docker importainer machine and then installed the, installed the Jellyfin container to run off of that. And that might have been a better option because I don't know how it's going to handle using so many resources or the little amount of resources I gave. So we're going to test this out. And if we need, we might migrate to the Docker container version and use the Docker container to be able to give myself more resources for future projects on this. But I don't know. So we're going to test it out, but I'm going to run it as a standalone VM on this now. And we're going to go from there. The Ubuntu image is still finished and installed, so after that's done, we're going to come back and we're going to set up Jellyfin. So, I'll be back when it's all done. Alright, and now after our machine's all set, we are ready to actually start the Jellyfin install. So, if we come over here to the Debian version, there's actually a nice curl uh, script over here. So, we can just grab this and it has a whole setup so we can just run a script and it'll install Jellyfin for us. If you don't want to do it through the repository using the automatic method, they do have a manual method, but I'm not doing that today. I'm going to use this nice script automate it, make it a lot faster. It's coming from their official site, so I trust it. So we're just going to do sudo and then paste in the command, and we're going to let that install. And we're going to hit enter because that looks good. And we're going to let this work. And when it's all done, Jellyfin should be installed. So we'll be right back when it's all done. And over here you can see the script is finishing up and it's just waiting for Jellyfin to start back up. So it processed through, it restarted the services and it's just giving like a delay so the Jellyfin services could actually start. So probably just like a sleep command and that's gonna pop up tell me we're all good. And here we are, so you can see, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So we can see it's actually all set. And if I come over here, it's active running. So we're good to go. And I can actually go over to the website and access it so it uses port 8096 so we'll go over there and go grab that so we'll do http yes colon slash slash i hope that's the right address i think it is i don't know if it is um uh, let's see nope 192 that's close i knew it was it was 190 something so let's fix that and here we go. So it's going to be giving me a secure connection fail. It's because it's not using um, cert. So we'll just change that to HTTP. I think it actually set it in here. Yeah, it's, oh, it says the, yeah, it says HTTP. So that was just me misreading it, but that's okay. So now we're going to start our Jellyfin setup. So I'm going to click next, give it a username. So I'm just going to get Carmine, give it a password. So this will be your password to log in. 
click next. I don't want to save that. And now we can add a media library. So I'll actually put something on here real quick just so we have something to hold its place. So I just put um, a video in and made a quick directory on the local machine so we can do it that way. So I'm just going to do it off the local machine. Of course, you can mount the network drive if you want and you can do it off the network share, but I'm going to use it off the local drive. So I'm going to click add library. I'm going to do movies and then we're going to fill out the preferred language. So I want English. Um, you can fill out all this information you want. I'm going to leave it and then we just got to find our folder. So we're going to grab that real quick. All right, so I added a quick local directory with a video in it. It's actually one of mine. It's the Proxmox idea, so be sure to check that out. But I'm gonna do it off the local storage instead of mounting a drive at the moment. So I'm gonna click Add Media. We're gonna select Movies. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it default, and then we're gonna go to Slash Home Carmine, and then we'll click OK. So it's in there. We'll find it eventually. We'll click OK, and I'm gonna leave everything else blank because that's OK. So we'll click Next, and uh, it might need to refresh the system, which will be OK. Uh, we can do automatic port mapping we give it a try it might not work properly so it's okay and allow connections remotely will um, allow people outside of the house to connect if you don't want to allow it outside your network you can leave this unchecked and it will block remote connection so we'll click next and then this is all done so now we can sign in and we can go into jellyfin for the first time so we'll click sign in and here we are in jellyfin so one thing that you might want to do when you make a directory local, if you're going to run your media off your local machine, like save it there, you probably don't want to save it in your slash home slash user drive like I just set up because it's probably going to run into a permission issue and you only need to change the permission so everything can access it. Uh, it'll probably be easier if you save it in like the slash whatever so you can do like slash movies or slash TV shows or however you're going to set it up. So I'll show you real quick what I just did and then we'll show you how to get into uh, Jellyfin. So let's do that. So here we are in the, uh, the slash directory. So I'm just going to go back, and you can see I'm just in the slash. We'll do there. We'll see the of movies, and then here you go. I have my video. So this is the actual setup proxmox on the Zemo board. And now if I come into here, we're going to click on the hamburger menu. We're going to do dashboard, and then we'll do libraries. And in here, you probably have that folder you might have just made that might have had an issue. Click on the three dots, and then we can do manage library. And here you can tell it how to reset it. So you can come to folders and redo it. You can delete it, or you can just add a new one, and then you can select it in there. But everything's all set, so we'll cancel out of that. We'll go home, and now we can watch this new video. Um, this isn't right because it's you know trying to detect it. So you could always change it. You could edit the metadata over here on the right. Uh, so we'll do that, and we can change it out. But the problem is it's detecting. So the title, so I can just click close stuff out because you know this is my video. So we're just going to close it. We'll hit save, and now you can see it's figured fixed. And then uh, if I want to play it, we can come over here and show we'll it. Everybody, it's so from Bar there I am. Tech. We're yeah, watching the video. Of me. Watching the video. Proxmox. Kind of like video inception. Proxmox watching the video. Me watching the video. Ago. Uh, we yeah, have some videos on it. Whatever. To it. And we'll That's how you would set it up on your Proxmox server to run the Jellyfin server. And then you could add your media to it and do it from there. So, of course, if you have your own media you want to do, you could add your own pictures or whatever you might want to do. You just hit edit. And then there's uh, images. And you could add images if you wanted or whatever you might want to do or could change the tag in. But that's how you add Jellyfin to a Proxmox server and add media to it the local way instead of doing like a network share. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, Jellyfin's a really cool tool to have. I've used Plex for a while now, and I like Plex, but I know a lot of people are starting to have some issues with it. I like Plex because I already have it set up. I already have a Plex pass, I already have a running server, and I have already my users using it. So for me to change over to Jellyfin or something else doesn't really make sense at this point. But in the future, you never know, I might have to. Jellyfin's a really good alternative to Plex. Like I said, it's free, there's no passes, there's no subscriptions, there's no nothing additional needed. You get hardware transcode out of the box with it, and that's super easy to set up and install, it's one command. So, if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can see when I upload. I do appreciate everybody for watching the video. If you have any questions or anything you want to see in the next video, comment below or join my Discord server and send me a message in there. Tell me what you want to see or if you know, there's a project you want to uh, see going forward. So. Again, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.